Chris and Debbie Jarvis is in the Jarvis family. Uh, Mr. Andy Back. It's always one of those occasions when the red book comes out. <laughs> this is all guaranteed, absolute, genuine, 100% rock solid, <laughs> golden fact. What is it? <laughs> Mrs. Debbie Dolores Desire Juliet Jarvis. This is your life. You were born simply, oh by the way, I've decided to draw a hasty veil over the, the Teddy Maybank incident in 1978. So uh, I don't want any nonsense being spoken about that, but right, I thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, you were born simply Debbie Francis in Kingston, Jamaica on Sunday the 20th of July 1959 at the Royal Free Hospital. You weighed in at 8 pounds, 2 ounces. Uh, we have a quote from the midwife and the attending obstetrician who agreed, this baby was physically perfect in every way. <laughs> and that phrase was to haunt you all your life so far. <laughs> By the time you were seven, your family had moved to Brighton where, with various brothers, you lived in Hollingbury. It's wonderful to have your sister Julie and all your brothers here today. Smudger, finger, knuckles, broken nose, and gas. We welcome you and salute you. Debbie, you'd learned to pick locks by the time you were ten, and you departed on a life of crime streetwise behaviour and various gang battles. You were fortunately never injured, remaining physically perfect. <laughs> but the experience damaged you in many ways, some of which have been healed. It was between 1970 and 1974 that you narrowly avoided meeting me for the first time. <laughs> you made friends easily and were known to be friendly to many of my classmates, especially Kenny Gibbon and Graham Stavely. Legend has it that you were particularly friendly with Baker, Baker, Barrett, Bell Chambers, Costello, Eversham, Morgan, Taylor, and of course Dutton. But over this we draw a hasty veil. We can only speculate about how friendly you might have been with me had you not avoided me at the time. <laughs> Life moved on and you gained five O-levels, including domestic science, candle making, <laughs> card design, watercolour painting and abseiling. You've since put all these skills into practice, so it just goes to show the educational system does count for something. You went direct from Van Dien to finishing school in Monaco, and from there onto the supermodeling circuit. You worked for Versace, Coco Chanel, Coca-Cola, and your face appeared on the covers of Vogue magazine, Vanity Fair, Harper's Bazaar, Elle, Woman's Weekly, and several Pirelli calendars. Your physical perfection became known around the world. <laughs> Following a brief marriage, your first daughter, Hayley Ethel, was born in a crazy mixture of Caesar, a, a diaphragmatic hernia and hiccups, <laughs> and she was just 16 months old when you attended Downs Bible Week for the first time. This was a lazy, hazy, crazy summer of fun, with tents, caravans, a yellow and white marquee, and the now legendary Chris Jarvis. Yay. The two of you first spoke during those days of Bible study, preaching, worship, and bivouacking. My memory of your report of the incident is unclear, but I think the conversation went something like this. Deb, oi you, clear off out of it. Chris, I'll just stay here for a while to give you the opportunity to apologise to me. <laughs> there was also a brief conversation which centred around Chris wanting to take Deb's sister Julie out. The facts are very hazy at that point. <laughs> By the autumn of 1982, the relationship had developed sufficiently for Chris to allow Deb to cut his hair. And since that time, Chris tells me, she has cut the hair of over 200 different people. 
<laughs> Love obviously blossomed over the clippers and economy side tubs of brokering that Chris used in those days as he attempted to get elected as a Liberal Party councillor. That still makes me laugh. That is true, that makes me laugh. <laughs> very, very entertaining. You see him in that hat that Jenny wears, it's quite funny in the really, anyway. Yeah. Um, lost my place. The couple were engaged in the spring of 1983 and were married at Clarendon Villas in October the same year. Ben Berger made some amusing remarks at the wedding, as you might have expected, and Chris's famous moustache was notable by both size and volume. <laughs> they honeymooned in Disney World. It was obviously a good time because second daughter, Naomi Elastoplast Jarvis, was born less than 10 months later. Which, if you work it out, is okay. <laughs> She was also subject to an emergency just be quiet. Also subject to an emergency operation. In the spring of 1985, Chris and Dem took on the leadership of what was called Giant Killers for the 11 to 14s at the church. Within a year, they had recruited Bob Holway and myself to work with them under the new name Dunamis. The next year saw the emergency arrival of Timothy Grenville right arm round the wicket leg break, Jarvis. <laughs> Named after his father's love of the summer game. <laughs> the next few years passed in a whirlwind of family life, dunamis events, late night leadership team meetings, abseiling holidays, card design, and the vast Jarvis dinners. <laughs> but disaster waited to strike. <laughs> <laughs> there was a cruel blood cowering within you as you approached your middle thirties. It lay dormant and useless for so long. <laughs> and then it was flared up for no reason in the confusion of pain and distress. Your appendix! As suddenly as it burst upon the scene, it was whipped out, but the damage was done. There was a small scar in your abdomen, from which time you were no longer internationally recognised as being physically oh. perfect. Wow, it's me! Two years later, the transformation of 15 Fairway Crescent began in a rolling programme of kitchen extensions, rooms in the roof, extra staircases, continuing kitchen extensions, outhouses, dormer windows, redecorating, replacement windows, continuing ex kitchen extension building, and ultimately conversion from electric lighting to candles. <laughs> Kirsty Angelique Jarvis arrived in the usual way, not so usual for the Jarvises. <coughs> and just six years later, the family was taken to California by Chris's excellent friend, Dennis, who's not only here tonight, but out of respect for you, Deb, he's not wearing his hat. <laughs> <laughs> and most recently, little Lucy Arbuthnot Jarvis was delivered earlier this year. So tonight, as we, your friends, celebrate 40 glorious years 30 or so of them physically perfect. <laughs> the last of you, well, we love you anyway. Let's raise a smile and a small cheer for our great friend, role model for women everywhere, mother times five, leader, abseiling champion, Kleenex user, <laughs> financial appreciator of auntie, and her unfeasibly large gratuities, and kitchen user extraordinaire, our very special friend, Debbie Jarvis. Thank you.